the most famous person I met in prison was like a German Amanda Knox. He was a son of a German diplomat who was stationed in America. Uh, and he himself was going to the University of Virginia on this full scholarship. He was a brilliant guy. He had this whole world ahead of him. And he and his girlfriend were convicted of having committed this brutal crime, having killed her parents in Virginia, then fled to Europe, spent a year on the run before finally being arrested in England. So a lot of things came into play. So the first was that he was the son of a diplomat, so he thought he had diplomatic immunity. So he says, I pled guilty only because I didn't believe they could convict me because I was the son of a diplomat, and so that way I could take the fall and protect her. He also later said, I pled guilty to protect her, and I can say this, I don't know about his guilt or his innocence, but I do know that having been in a really unhealthy and meshed relationship, I probably would have pled guilty to a crime I had not committed when I was in the depths of that kind of insanity. I remember being so enmeshed and so codependent that I felt like I had to save the day. That being said, they were both finally extradited back to America when the death penalty was taken off the table. Uh, she pleaded guilty and he went to court, he went to trial. She received 90 years and he received, I think, life or double life, I can't remember. Anyway, so they're in prison, and this is international news, you know, couple extradited from England, you know, death penalty questions, you know, guilt and innocence, diplomats, it, it was a big deal. But it wasn't nearly as big of a deal as the swelling support he received over the next three decades as he fought for his innocence. So he finally had record producers and, and authors and actors and German politicians, he had all these people on his side. He was getting postcards from the Prime Minister of Germany wishing him well and wishing him home soon. I mean, it was just insane. So anyways, um, the whole question was, you know, is there any way that he can look at this? He filed a writ of actual innocence, asking them to test DNA evidence. They turned it down. He filed a petition for pardon, basically saying, I'm guilty. Governor, please let me go. So what's interesting is he had received a parole or a conditional pardon from one of the governors before. This was in, I think, 2015. And that was at the end of the governor's term. He basically said, look, just get him out of here. We don't want to deal with this. And then he went in the news and he made this big stink about, you know, this, the people here have, have wronged me and this is terrible and, you know, they, they, this is just a corrupt system. And the next incoming governor canceled his pardon or canceled his clemency and held him there and basically said, yeah, I know he said you were going home, but you're not. Which, can you imagine that? Like, you're sitting in prison, you think you're going home, and then they say, no, no, we're just kidding. So anyway, he continued to fight. He put in a writ for actual innocence saying, hey, this DNA evidence will clear me. They turned it down. Uh, he put in a pardon saying, hey, this is all the evidence that says I'm not guilty, and they didn't rule on it. Instead, in 2019, after 33 years, they released him on old law parole. So he had been convicted before 1995, so he was eligible for parole. So they released both him and his girlfriend for her to go back to Canada and him to go back to Germany. So you would think this is the end, but I don't know, maybe not. So he went back to Germany and he was widely held as this innocent man who had been wrongly convicted by the, the American criminal justice system. And it was just so unjust and unfair and ridiculous. And he's done book tours and he's done TV tours and he's a celebrity. I mean, he, he has a really good life in Germany now because everybody thinks that he was an innocent man in prison for 33 years. So not only was I in prison with him, I mean, we talked about literature, we, we talked in the rec yard. He was an interesting guy because he had this intellect and he had this education that was pretty rare in there. So it was somebody that I could talk to. But strangely, he had people coming to see him for a podcast where they started doing this podcast, largely thinking that he was innocent and they wanted to kind of shed light on that. So this person was a reporter who also did a story on me back in 2019 about the fact that I was applying for clemency, not saying that I was innocent because I was guilty, but instead saying that, hey, I was sentenced to twice the high point of my guidelines. I was sentenced, you know, I committed these crimes right after my 18th birthday and I've done a lot to better myself and help others while I was inside. So she did a story on me. Well, at the same time, she was interviewing him or talking about his, you know, p pending release or pending pardon. So this bizarre thing happened where she continued to do this podcast and she's interviewed everybody. They've done DNA testing. It's this amazing thing. Small town, big crime, if you're interested. I mean, they have literally gone and collected DNA from people to clear them or to implicate them. And it's, it's an amazing process. So uh, he gets out in 2019. He's, he's living this life in Germany and they continue doing the podcast because they're interested. You know, they want to know. They talk about alternate theories. They get into this. And she and I end up being friends. So we end up being friends when she leaves the TV station. And once we have this kind of like professional relationship, uh, turn into a friendship. Um, so she can't report on me anymore. And we end up getting closer and closer. And in 2021, uh, we end up getting really close. You know, she has a personal crisis at the same time that I'm finding out I might be getting out of prison. And we end up in this relationship and I get out and she's been my girlfriend ever since. So she's continuing to do this and I'm kind of stuck in the middle because I knew this guy. I knew this guy in prison. Like I said, you know, we, we, we talked on the fence. We talked about literature. We interacted. I had pictures of us together. Uh, but I also know her story and I know the direction that it's going and I know there's been a lot of animosity between her and this guy. So it's this really interesting situation of being stuck in the middle because I'm not going to contribute what I know or talk about what I know to her because I don't feel like that's okay. Like whatever he and I talked about is a private matter, nor am I going to talk about what I talk about with her with him. I'm not going to send him an email and say, hey, guess what? You know, we did this. 
So it's this interesting situation being stuck in the middle of, you know, essentially two people who are arguing about, you know, the narrative of what happened. And I don't know what happened. I don't know that, that she knows what happens. I'm assuming he knows what happens, but you never know. I mean, he could have been totally innocent and something completely unexpected could have happened or he could have blacked out and committed the crime and who knows. But it's this bizarre situation. And I'm really grateful to be uh, sharing these stories of just how insane my life has become.